Have you ever wondered if there were some magical elixir out there in the world that could make your hair grow longer, thicker, faster, and more lusciously? Well, the recipe I'm going to be sharing with you in this video may not be magic, but it's basically the next best thing. The herbal hair oil recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video is largely responsible for much of my own improved hair health and length and thickness and growth over the past six years of my own natural hair care journey since cutting off my hair to chin length. My hair, believe it or not, is now at hip length when it's stretched out after having never previously been able to grow so long. If you would like to know the other products and practices that I implemented in my hair care journey to grow my hair so long and healthy, be sure to check out my previous two hair care videos, which will be linked in the description of this video as well as in the cards of this video. This herbal hair oil recipe really has much of its inspiration from Ayurvedic hair care, and it uses a lot of Ayurvedic herbs that are known to promote hair health and growth. I would like to give a huge thank you to Curly Proverbs, who created the original recipe that my own recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you is based on. I found her channel shortly into my own hair care journey and I found it tremendously helpful and I will be linking it in the description as well as her original hair oil video. I have made a few changes to her original oil recipe, just what I've learned throughout the years of my own usage of it and I think my changes make it even more potent and effective. Feel free to watch my video and her video and compare recipes and you come up with your own approach. That's the fun part about making your own hair recipes. Now, one of the coolest things about hair and scalp oiling is that women and really people in general all over the world throughout pretty much all of recorded human history have been using oil on their hair and scalp to improve the length and health and thickness and lusciousness of their hair. Not to mention the fact that a nice oil scalp massage is just a super relaxing therapeutic practice for your overall body and self. It's actually only in our modern day era that much of the age old wisdom of hair and scalp oiling has been forgotten. And there's kind of been a break in the generational passing down of this knowledge. And so we have to work hard to bring this back and try it. Oils are really nature's magical ingredient for skin health hair health, and even overall health when healthy oils are used internally as well. So as I mentioned, the oil recipe I'm going to be sharing with you is primarily Ayurvedic in its origins, using a lot of Ayurvedic herbs that are renowned not just for their hair benefits, but for their overall medicinal benefits as well. This oil recipe also contains one semi-modern ingredient that seriously boosts its potency and its ability to grow hair fast. And I'll be talking about that ingredient when we get into the recipe. So this video will include a short intro of my own story with using this oil and variations of it for the past several years and how it has helped my own hair growth journey. I will then go over a few of the main magical herbal or other ingredients in this hair oil recipe and what their benefits are from both a Western modern perspective as well as from a traditional Ayurvedic or Eastern perspective. Then I will be demonstrating the actual mixing process of the oil. And if you would like to jump to that section right now, the timestamp for where it begins is right here. So feel free to skip ahead. It won't offend me, I promise. So the detailed recipe with all of the exact amounts that you need will be written in the description as well as in the accompanying blog post for this video, which will also be linked in the description. Before we jump into my own quick hair story with this oil, who is this video even for? Let's talk about that. This video is for you if you would like to try a natural, simple, and relatively inexpensive means of dramatically improving your hair and scalp health. And when I say improving your hair and scalp health, I really mean that in an all-encompassing way. This oil recipe has the potential to increase your rate of hair growth, as well as to allow you to retain more of the length that you do grow, which will allow you to see more of a quicker increase in your hair length if that's something you're looking for. Using this oil will also improve your hair's natural shine and manageability and help increase the thickness of your hair through growing new baby hairs, waking up old follicles that hadn't been producing hair, as well as helping to prevent excessive hair shedding. Which leads me to my next point. This recipe is definitely, definitely for you if you are struggling with hair loss, hair thinning, whatever the cause of that is. 
Now, I plan on making a future video all about hair loss and hair shedding because it is such a big topic and there's so many different reasons or factors that can play into why someone is losing their hair. But needless to say, this oil recipe is a, a relatively quick and simple way to do something topically to help stop that excessive hair shedding and help grow new hairs, whatever the internal causes or factors that might be that are contributing to your hair loss. You know, to a lot of people in our modern culture, the concept of applying oil to your scalp might seem kind of strange because I find our modern era is very oil phobic. <laughs> but you have to remember that, first of all, oils have been used throughout all of recorded history for purposes like this. And your scalp is like the earth and your hair is like the plants or the vegetation that are growing from the earth. And just as if we have a garden and we want to grow more luscious fruits and vegetables or plants, we would fertilize the soil and the earth that they're growing from. Applying healthy, natural herbal oils to your scalp is like fertilizing the earth of your scalp to help improve the quality and thickness and length of your hair growth. Now, one more note I would like to make, if you are just starting your natural hair growth journey and you're just starting out with the concept of oiling your hair and oiling your scalp and all of the ingredients in this recipe overwhelm you, please don't feel that way. You do not need a recipe like this to get the benefits of hair oiling or scalp oiling into your life. It could be as simple as just going to your local grocery store and buying a tub of coconut oil or buying a bottle of jojoba oil or castor oil and starting with that. All of these oils in their just simple natural state without anything else added to it are extremely beneficial, especially if you have never used any oils before. So please don't feel overwhelmed. If anything, just take this video as a future inspiration for later on when you're more comfortable with hair oiling and with mixing recipes. I will also say that all of the ingredients that I'm going to be listing in this recipe, I will have links in the description and in a pinned comment below for where you can buy these. There, they will all be Amazon links and that's a really convenient way to get all of them. That being said, if you live in a city that has a Indian grocery store, you may be able to find some or even all of these ingredients there and the prices might even be less expensive than on Amazon. They might not be organic ingredients per se, but that's actually how I started with using these recipes in my own life. It was just a very accessible way for me to work it into my budget. So that's also an option for you if you're overwhelmed by the potential cost of these ingredients. They really don't have to be expensive if you know where to look. But those links will be there for you for your convenience if you just wanna order the organic versions right from Amazon. Okay, so I have been using this exact herbal hair oil recipe with slight variations for the past several years since cutting my hair to chin length and afterwards growing it out to now hip length. Up until chopping my hair off and really getting serious about natural hair care, I'd never really done hair oiling of any kind before. And so I did start out for a brief period with just plain and simple oil, what I just described to you, but I quickly discovered this original video from Curly Proverbs and adapted it for my own needs and have been using it consistently. And I have never seen or felt any hair oil like this one. Even though it takes time and intention for me to get the ingredients and mix up a batch in my busy life as a mom, the results are always well worth it. There's a reason I've kept coming back to it for these past several years. This oil recipe has been a key factor, a key tool for me in increasing my own, of course, hair length, as we already talked about, but also hair thickness. While I have always been blessed with naturally more thick hair, after having my first and even my second child before getting seriously into my hair journey, as well as making sure I had a healthy diet in place, my hair thickness did suffer quite a bit through postpartum hormonal shedding. And part of that time I was on a very restrictive diet that I was on for good intentions, but it really didn't do my hair any favors. It also increased my amount of hair shedding. And I also had very poor scalp health at that time before embarking on this natural hair journey. So all of that contributed to the fact that although I still had relatively thick hair, I had a lot of thin thinning areas around here, certain areas at the back of my head were just feeling quite thin and it was really bothering me. 
Now, going forward after having implemented this hair oil recipe into my routine, as well as other practices that I go over in my other hair care videos, my hair is thick all over. My edges are, I mean, they're not perfect, but they're quite grown in now. And that's been with having two more babies since my first two, I have four. And although I do always have postpartum shedding to some degree, it's never been so dramatic as it was after, especially my first, that was the worst one. <laughs> this hair oil recipe has also been amazing for improving the quality of the new growth of my hair, especially I have certain areas of my head that are very much curlier than other areas and they're prone to dryness and kind of naturally tend to lack that luster and that shine that we would always like to see in our hair. But can I say that using this oil on my scalp regularly has really helped improve the quality and the health and the shine of the new growth coming in at the top. And that's been a major benefit for me. I'm also convinced that it definitely helps improve hair growth. Every time I apply this oil to my scalp, first of all, it's extremely relaxing. It feels very cooling and just soothing as you apply it to your scalp. But it also has several ingredients in it that definitely stimulate blood circulation and stimulate hair growth. And personally, I can feel that in my scalp when I'm applying it and even long after having washed it out. For example, I just did an oil treatment a couple of days ago with this oil and washed it out and I still feel this tingling sensation in my scalp. This oil really helps increase hair growth. Okay, before we jump into the recipe demonstration, I would like to give a quick overview of the few of the main herbal ingredients in this oil and what their magical benefits are, both from a modern Western perspective, as well as from more of an Ayurvedic Eastern traditional perspective. I'm not an expert on Ayurveda specifically, but I love the traditional principles of a lot of forms of Eastern medicine like Ayurveda, as well as traditional Chinese medicine. I'm more familiar with traditional Chinese medicine, but Ayurveda has a lot in common with that form of medicine. And so while I'm not an expert, I would love to just give you guys a taste of some of that perspective on these herbal ingredients as well. So for sake of time, I'm obviously not gonna be going into detail on all of the ingredients. I'm going to be focusing on just the herbal ingredients but rest assured that the oils themselves that form the base of this recipe also have a myriad of amazing benefits for the hair and scalp. So like I said before, if all you can muster is just a simple coconut oil treatment or castor oil treatment without anything else in it, that's wonderful too and that has amazing benefits as well. Let's talk about fenugreek seeds first because that's one of the main herbal ingredients in this oil. For the recipe I will be showing you, we will actually be working with whole fenugreek seeds that we will freshly be grinding. I will be using an old coffee grinder for that. Now you don't have to do it that way. You could just use the whole fenugreek seeds, which is how the original Curly Proverbs recipe did it. Personally, I prefer to grind it up fresh because I think you get more of the potential potency out of the seeds into the oil that way. You could likewise also use pre-ground fenugreek if you don't have a means of grinding it up. So fenugreek seeds from a modern Western perspective are very beneficial for hair growth and scalp health because they contain a lot of iron and protein, which are both components that your hair needs in order to grow. Hair is literally made of protein. So if you can feed it protein, it's going to help the hair growth. They also contain a unique blend of flavonoids and saponins which have anti-inflammatory and antifungal effects, both of which are very important for scalp health specifically. A lot of us to varying degrees have a lot of inflammation in our scalp, as well as if any kind of dandruff is usually connected to fungal type bacteria in our scalp to, diff to differing degrees, of course. But anything that you can apply to your scalp that is naturally antifungal and anti-inflammatory is going to help soothe and cool your scalp, bring it into balance and prevent the growth of bacteria that could lead to dandruff, which of course clogs up your follicles and your pores and prevents the hair from growing properly. So anything we can do to combat those things are amazing for hair growth. So there has even been a relatively modern study done on fenugreek seeds and hair growth. 
It had a control group, those who were using a placebo, as well as the group that was actually using the fenugreek seeds. And it did show a massive improvement in hair growth and thickness in the group that was using the fenugreek seeds as opposed to the placebo group. So from an Ayurvedic perspective, fenugreek is a warming and pungent herb, which of course brings the blood flow to your scalp. Anything that's warming and pungent is going to stimulate blood flow and blood flow is the source of hair growth. Our hair is formed from our blood originally. Our blood is what carries the nutrients to our scalp, which then creates the hair that grows out of our scalp. So anything you can do that can stimulate blood flow and circulation to your scalp will first of all be amazing for overall health because a lot of us suffer from a lack of circulation to our heads just because of gravity, because our heads are at the top of our body, as well as stress. A lot of us carry around stress that can cause tension in our scalp that prevents the blood from flowing freely where it is supposed to be. And in addition to just being good for your overall health to promote blood circulation to your scalp, it is of course beneficial for scalp health as well as growing hair faster and more thickly, as well as dealing with any kind of potential hair shedding problem you might have. Anytime someone is dealing with hair shedding, whatever the internal causes of that may be, helping to bring blood circulation to the scalp is going to help combat that hair loss. Okay, let's talk about henna. Henna is one of my favorite ingredients for hair growth. I have been using henna off and on throughout my past six years of natural hair growth journey. And until discovering herbs like henna, I had never experienced the potential benefits that Ayurvedic herbs could bring. And if you've never heard of this before, just have an open mind, but there's a lot of Ayurvedic herbs, including henna, that are literally like amazing for hair health. And I'm not just talking about growing hair more from your scalp, but also preserving the health of the hair that's already here and helping to prevent breakage and strengthen the hair strand all the way down. Henna is one of these that is amazing for that. Now, in terms of this hair oil, the henna is mostly going to be getting applied to our scalp because that's primarily how I choose to use this oil is mostly as a scalp treatment, mostly because it takes me a lot of time and effort to mix up a batch of this. So I'd rather save it for my scalp as well as just my ends but you can absolutely use it on the entire length of your hair and it would be great for that too. So henna has long been used and prized in India for traditional body art. It does contain dye, it's called Lawson dye, and that is actually one of the ingredients which can be so beneficial for the hair when you're making a kind of henna hair mask and applying it to the hair length, which is coincidentally the same way that henna dyes work. Now, that being said, if you're scared, scared about using henna in this oil because of its potential coloring effects, I don't think there's that much cause for concern because of the fact that the dye in henna is not released when it's in an oil-based substance. It is mostly just released in a water-based, somewhat acidic substance. Whenever you're making henna hair dye, for example, the instructions will tell you that you can add no more than one to two teaspoons max to the entire mixture because if you add any more oil than that it will prevent the dye from being released out of the henna and into the solution so you can imagine that when we're adding henna into a purely oil-based substance it's not going to be able to release that dye so you're not going to have to worry about hair coloring effects and i can personally say that it hasn't had an effect on my own hair color I have used henna in water-based forms in like a henna tea that I like to spray on my hair and that does color my hair, which I like, I don't mind it, but the oil itself has not colored my hair. Now that being said, if you're worried about it, of course, do a strand test or you could sub out the henna for a herb called cassia, which is basically known as neutral henna. So that's also an option. Okay, so what are the benefits of henna for hair and hair growth? So from a modern Western perspective, henna is an astringent, purgative, and antifungal ingredient, which again makes it great for scalp health because a lot of us that are suffering from hair loss or just improper scalp health, anything that's astringent is going to help to kind of seal up those follicles, bring the blood circulation back to them if they've become kind of like lax and overly relaxed on a, of course, under a microscope on that kind of level. And again, and anything that's naturally antifungal is great for scalp health because it controls the growth of bacteria that can potentially cause dandruff. 
Henna also contains vitamin E, which helps contribute to hair health and luster and shine and moisture. Now, henna also contains loads of tannins, which are the same substance that are found in black tea. And although, again, this isn't going to dye your hair, applying tannins to your hair in this kind of way will help prevent premature graying of the hair. Okay, so from an Ayurvedic perspective, henna has cooling properties. And let's just link this back to what I said about fenugreek. This is one of the reasons why I love this oil blend so much because a lot of hair oil blends out there that use herbal ingredients to stimulate hair growth, they're either very warming or very cooling. Like a very cooling oil would be something that only contains peppermint essential oil as its stimulating ingredient, for example. That's very cooling. As opposed to a hair growth oil blend like red pimento hair growth oil from Tropic Isle, which I have used and I do love it by the way, but it's of course very warming because it's made with literal hot peppers in the oil. And both of those are great, but what I love about this oil is that it's very balanced. The fenugreek is mildly warming herb, so it does have that heat that stimulates blood circulation. The henna, on the other hand, does also stimulate blood circulation and it's astringent on the scalp, which is great for hair growth, but it is cooling. So you combine the cooling effects of the henna and some of the other herbs with the warming of the fenugreek and it's a very balanced herbal oil. And from an Ayurvedic perspective, anything that's cooling will help to obviously deal with conditions that are caused by excessive heat or inflammation in the scalp, which of course leads to conditions like dandruff, redness and irritation on the scalp, and too much scalp oil, things like that. Let's talk about amla. Amla is one of my all-time favorite Ayurvedic ingredients. I know I'm saying this about like all of them, but amla really is. I actually take amla on a daily basis internally. It's in my supplement regime. It's actually the same amla powder that I use in my hair oil that I take. I just mix in a drink. It actually tastes really good. So what is amla? Amla is also known as Indian gooseberry. If you, you can actually buy them in Indian grocery stores. They're about this big. They basically do look like a large gooseberry. If you've ever seen a North American gooseberry, that's what amla looks like, except it's much more of a sour and astringent flavor. So here we go again. It's another astringent herbal ingredient in this hair oil, which is great for scalp health and hair growth because anything that's astringent, basically, if you picture eating a very sour gooseberry and what it does to your mouth, it kind of makes you like sucking your lips and your cheeks because it's so sour. That's what astringent herbs do to your scalp when you apply them to your scalp. They basically seal up the hair follicles and these tiny little muscles that are around the hair follicles, which as you can imagine can help prevent excessive hair fall as well as to draw blood circulation to those follicles where it may have been lacking before. Now, amla is very naturally high in vitamin C, which is the original reason why I chose to add it to my hair oil recipe. It's not in Curly Proverbs' original recipe. She actually uses straight modern vitamin C powder in hers. I do believe that she's since put a note in her video that she no longer chooses to use vitamin C because it can actually have a drying effect on the length of her hair. I never used the vitamin C. I always preferred to keep my oil more on the herbal side. So I always, from the beginning, would just sub it out with amla because amla is naturally containing vitamin C, which will work together synergistically with the MSM in this oil that we're going to be talking about later. But in addition to that, in addition to the vitamin C, it also has all these other myriad of hair and scalp benefits. And it's been used traditionally, especially in India, for hair and scalp oil treatments forever. <laughs> like as far as we know, it's been used for a super long time for that purpose. So generally it's believed to strengthen the scalp and the hair, prevent excessive hair fall, stimulate hair growth, prevent premature graying, and prevent or treat dandruff. Now, one note about amla is it can have a darkening effect on the hair. I don't think I've ever really seen this in my own hair, but it is believed to possibly have a darkening effect if it's used in relatively concentrated quantities. I don't think this oil is going to have that effect because I've looked at the recipes for amla oil that are pur purported as darkening the hair and the concentration of amla in those recipes is much stronger than that of this recipe. But if you're worried, you could always decrease the amount of amla or leave it out altogether. But it does have great benefits of the hair. I think you should give it a try. 
And on the modern Western perspective, there was actually a 2012 study done on AMLA and hair growth, which showed that it definitely helped to reverse the effects of male pattern balding in the study participants. Okay, so even though I said we weren't going to talk about the oil base of this recipe, I am going to talk about the neem oil because in this case, it's being used more as a herbal ingredient. It's just a very small amount relative to the other oils. The reason I chose to use neem oil in my recipe is because neem oil is amazing. Neem oil is so, so, so amazing for hair and scalp health. Every time I've used it in the past, I'm just amazed at the shine it adds to my hair, at how fast it allows my hair to grow. I actually have a really cool story about neem and the neem plant in general. A few years ago, I found a YouTube recipe for a neem hair treatment, and I don't even remember the exact recipe or if it was a mask or oil, but I do remember that it was made with neem leaf powder. And I just remember I had never seen such fast hair growth effects from any other herbal treatment I'd done than that neem one had. It was just amazing. But the one downside of neem oil is that even though it is so amazing for hair and scalp health and length and growth, it does have a very strong smell. It's not necessarily a bad smell, but it's just a very strong, very distinctive smell. And so that's why I haven't used it as frequently as I would like to, but it occurred to me recently that I could just add it in as a small amount into this hair oil recipe because neem oil is so potent, so strong. It has, its benefits are so strong that it can actually be used more like an essential oil in the sense that you only really need a few drops of it in a, an, in a carrier oil for it to be effective. So I did add a tablespoon of it into this recipe. Now that being said, if you're really worried about the potential smell of this oil, um, it's not super bad. It did alter the smell a little bit, but to me it's worth it. I mean, look at how shiny it made my hair. Um, you, could, you could leave it out. So I am listing it as an optional ingredient, but neem oil is amazing. So let's talk a bit about neem oil quickly. It contains vitamin E, which is amazing for hair moisture, hair shine. It also contains loads of antioxidants and other nutritive ingredients that are amazing for hair and scalp health. Now, those of you who are gardeners or have a lot of house plants may have heard of neem oil before as being a natural insecticide. And I actually have it in my house all the time for that purpose. It's known to be a natural, gentle, and safe insecticide that you can mix with a bunch of water and water any affected plant with it and it will deal with any sort of tiny little annoying bugs that are living in house plants. But if you apply that same principle to scalp health, it's obviously great for dealing with any kind of bacteria that could be causing dandruff on your scalp. Of course, it's great for head lice. I think it's actually good for preventing head lice. Like it could definitely treat head lice, but I think if you were using neem oil or a recipe that contains neem oil, regularly on your scalp, it would probably go a far way in even preventing hair lice from ever happening. So that's good to keep in mind for those of us who have kids for sure. Okay, finally, let's talk about the MSM in this hair recipe. If you would like to hear more about MSM and the benefits of using it internally for hair growth, then be sure to check out my last hair care video. It's called How to Grow Hip Length Hair and I will link it in the description and there's a section at the end that's in the timestamps. It's all about MSM and how it increased my own rate of hair growth quite dramatically actually. But in the case of this recipe, we're actually talking about using it topically. And there's also something very amazing about using MSM topically. It can obviously help stimulate hair growth because what MSM is, is organic sulfur. And our bodies and our hair need sulfur in order to grow. Like sulfur is a large component towards building hair. So obviously when you apply it to your scalp, it's great for increasing the rate of hair growth. And it's also great for skin health and scalp health. So it can also help towards your hair health in that way. Okay, so let's begin mixing up our herbal hair oil recipe. For the exact amounts in this recipe, be sure to check the description or the blog post for this video. 
We're starting out with these whole fenugreek seeds, which I like to grind freshly myself in a coffee grinder. This way the medicinal properties of the seeds are fresh and much more potent than if I'd bought pre-ground seeds. I'd also like to give a note on why I like using the freshly ground seeds as opposed to whole seeds. The main reason is that I don't believe whole seeds would be able to release much of their medicinal properties into the oil when it's room temperature steeping the way it will be. Next is our oils for this recipe. So we're using a large amount of coconut oil for this base. Coconut oil is an amazing oil for hair because it can actually penetrate into the hair strand. It also contains lauric acid, which is the same amazing ingredient that's found in breast milk. Also helps to reduce protein loss in the hair. Olive oil. Olive oil is naturally high in vitamin E and antioxidants. It increases shine and moisture and reduces damage in the hair. And next is our castor oil for this recipe. Castor oil is widely known and has been used around the world and for hundreds of years to improve hair growth, especially by being applied to the scalp. Castor oil is actually just a really great healing oil in general to be applied to the body as a whole, but certainly to the scalp if you're looking to improve hair growth. And next is our melted coconut oil. I did melt this over a low heat on the stove, so it's easily mixed. And now we're going to go ahead and add our herbs to this recipe. So here are those freshly ground fenugreek seeds that we talked about. These make up the bulk of the herbal ingredients in this oil. There's a very large quantity of them. And now here we go with our henna powder and our amla powder. Now we're going to go ahead and add our essential oils to this recipe. So you can really play around with essential oils, but the ones I like to use are lavender, rosemary, peppermint, and tea tree. All of these are great for balancing the hair and the scalp as well as bringing blood circulation and stimulating hair growth, as well as healing the scalp and preventing conditions like dandruff. And now we're going to give all of that a slow mix to combine all of the ingredients. And you can see that those fenugreek seeds do like to sink to the bottom, and that is totally normal and to be expected. During the steeping period for this oil, I did give it a stir once a day for the first few days, just to make sure that those ingredients were releasing all of their potency into the oils. You can see what a dark and rich color this oil has. And now we're going in with our MSM powder. Normally when I'm ingesting MSM, I like to use the really high quality MSM crystals, but I didn't have any on hand at the time. And as it so happens, the powder is more readily absorbed into the oil anyways. So now we're going in with one more magic herbal oil ingredient, and that is neem oil. I am using a relatively small amount of this oil compared to the other oils because it is so potent. You don't need a lot and it does have a strong smell, but it is amazing for the hair. And I've already seen a difference in this oil and how it treats my hair with the neem oil included. It just makes it that much better. So I recommend letting this oil steep for at least a week. I would say one to three weeks. Let it seep in a dark cupboard, somewhere where it won't be exposed to sunlight, or you could have this in a brown glass jar as well. Okay, so my oil is finished steeping and I've put it into this glass dropper bottle and I've actually warmed up the bottle a bit by putting it in a pot of hot water for a few minutes. So just taking out my protective style that I had in for the day. And of course this is right before a wash so my hair is as oily as it would ever get. So 
So now I'm just going to go in and lightly finger detangle my hair. Normally it would be a lot more tangly than this, but I have gotten into the habit of doing a lot more finger detangling as well as boar bristle brushing throughout the week, so it's much more manageable than it normally is. You want to get your hair as tangle free as possible so that the oil is able to readily absorb into all the areas of your hair evenly. So at this point, I'm actually going to go in with my boar bristle brush and brush through my hair very lightly. This is just to get it, again, smoothed out in texture so that the oil is able to readily access all the areas of my hair. Believe it or not, actually the process of researching and creating my first historical hair care video did a lot to reconvince me of the benefits of boar bristle brushing, and so I've been working to fit it into my hair life for the past few weeks. So here we go. The thing I like about this brown glass bottle, which will be linked in the description for where you can buy it, is that it has this lovely glass dropper, which makes it very easy to access the various areas of your scalp and not apply too much oil. You really don't need a lot of oil. A little goes a long way. So at this point, I'm just going to be parting my hair in various sections and applying oil there, especially focusing on this area, particularly where I would like to gro be growing some more baby hairs, as well as around my whole hairline and especially down the center line of my head because your head actually has a lot of acupressure points along the center part line that correspond to hair growth and increasing hair growth and hair health. So now I've just separated out half of my hair to work on it specifically. So I'm applying the oil and you can see that I go in with my fingers, the flat tips of my fingers, and massage the oil in after adding it. And I'm actually giving my hair another brush along the ends and just distributing some of that oil that may be excess at my roots and bringing it down my hair more. This is something that I've added to my hair oiling routine, again, since my previous historical hair care video, and it really made a big difference in how my hair turned out and how the oil was able to evenly treat all of my hair. So the best part of this hair oiling routine is giving yourself a really good massage. So I'm giving just a quick demo of what your scalp massage should look like. You should actually start on the areas surrounding your scalp, not just the scalp. So I like to massage my neck, my shoulders, where I experience a lot of muscle tension, as well as my forehead, as I showed you a moment ago. The idea is that your body is full of lymph nodes and acupressure points all through these areas and if they become blocked it's going to negatively affect your scalp health so you really want to clear out any muscle tension or stress from any of these areas so that the blood and life force is able to flow freely throughout your head and scalp and neck and shoulders. So now I'm going in and massaging my scalp, paying close attention to the acupressure points that correspond to hair growth. And I will put in a diagram for you of where these points are located. You do not need to be exact unless you're doing a specific acupressure massage. And now I'm going in with my shampoo brush and giving my scalp a really good massage with that. When you're massaging your scalp, it's a good rule of thumb that you really want your scalp to be flexible beneath your fingers and to be able to move. That means that there's a good flow of blood and that nothing is blocked in that area. Okay, so now I'm oiling the rest of the length of my hair. As you can see, I'm just using castor oil for the bulk of it and using a little bit of my herbal hair oil for the ends. This is simply because I like to lengthen the amount of time that my herbal hair oil lasts me by saving it just for my scalp and my ends because it is that precious and that time consuming to make. It's not actually that time consuming, but. So now that everything is all finished, I'm actually putting my hair into four braids for the night and these braids are actually on the tighter side. These are not the same braids that I will be washing my hair in. Those braids will be looser. But for the purposes of sleeping overnight, I want these braids to be tight because it will help the oil really soak into all of the hair evenly. This is especially important for me because I have different textures of hair on my head and the oil is more likely to not penetrate into the curlier sections unless I do something like this. 
and I also did go in with some coconut oil and applied it to my ends because it's an ultra moisturizing oil that I really like the effect of on my ends but not necessarily on the rest of my hair because it's hard to wash out. So there we go, I'm ready to sleep for the night, but of course I'm going to need to protect my head and my pillow from all of this oil that's in it. So you could use a shower cap, but I did not have any on hand, so I'm literally just using an old plastic grocery bag and knotting it around my head like this. Apart from protecting your pillow from oil, a great benefit of sleeping with plastic over your head while you're doing an oil treatment is it will actually cause your head to get a lot more hot because it's not able to breathe and that will really help the oils soak into your scalp and your hair as you're sleeping. And then of course just for looks more or less as well as to hold on the bag I go in with my silk scarf and tie that on over top. This also just adds another layer of warmth to my head which allows those oils to readily soak into my scalp and my hair. Ready to sleep for the night and the next morning I will wash it out. If you'd like to see my full natural hair washing routine, be sure to watch my first two videos on historical hair care. Okay everyone, I really hope you found this video and the recipe and the demonstration super helpful. And I hope that you feel inspired to go out there and mix up your own batch of this amazing herbal hair care oil. Thanks again to the amazing and lovely and talented Curly Proverbs for creating the original iteration of this recipe that inspired my own hair growth journey and creating my own altered version of it. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you feel inspired to try out this hair oil. Okay, if you love my channel and you found this video wildly informative and would like to personally thank me, YouTube has now added a super thanks button in the bar under the video where you can thank me by just giving a small monetary donation, say enough to buy a coffee, and it really, really means a lot to me and it helps to support me in making these videos. If you are wanting to make this recipe yourself, again, be sure to check out the description and I will have a pinned comment as well with the links for where you can buy all of these ingredients on Amazon. And it also helps support this channel if you do purchase anything through those links because I earn a small commission and no extra fee to you. Thanks in advance. And finally, if you haven't yet heard, I have an exciting announcement about this channel. I recently set up a YouTube channel membership program, which is basically YouTube's equivalent of Patreon, where you can choose to financially support your favorite content creators per month in exchange for extra exclusive content. So in the case of my YouTube channel membership, there will be two tiers to help suit different budgets. The first tier you will get 24 hours of advance ad free access to my latest YouTube videos, as well as a couple exclusive insider posts per month showing what I'm working on. For the second tier, most excitingly, you will have access to an exclusive monthly live stream with me. It will be a Q&A live stream where you can ask me any questions about say your hair care journey or your sewing or whatever you wanna ask me and I will answer it there for you on the live video. And most excitingly, if you join the second tier, you'll have a say and a sway on future video topics. So that's very exciting as well. Please consider joining because if enough of you do, it would go a long way in helping to support me to continue making these videos for you all. The accompanying blog post for this hair oil recipe and video, which will have everything that I just explained to you in its written format, as well as the full written out recipe and photos and the demo of how to apply it. That will be linked for you in the description. I also have a free weekly email newsletter on my blog that you can sign up for. And all of my social media accounts are linked in the description as well. See you on the next video.